everybody. It's Liz from Northern Bell Farms. Um, I wanted to say hey, and this is my first video, so hopefully this week I'll be able to put out um, more videos than normal to get content and get things going. Um, but I would like to introduce you to my farm. Um, we are a micro farm because we're on an acre. Um, I live here in southern Georgia in Richmond Hill, which is right outside of Savannah. Um, so we sell eggs and bouquets and salves, soaps, tea jars up there. Um, here's a couple orders for customers coming today. And then produce, any produce we might have. Um, I guess I will get started and show you around. Um, we have three different gardens. Well, four if you count the berry patch that we're still putting in. Actually, all gardens are always going in because they're tons of work. But um, I'll show you this first one. This is our original. It's the biggest. Um, this is where I put anything that needs full sun or... I also separate my peppers by gardens. Um, out back is gets shade. Um, it's our only garden that gets lots of shade, so that's where I have to put my tomatoes, or else they, or else they uh, get really dried out and get disease and all nasty. So they go out back along with any of our sweet peppers, and then our hot peppers go out front here. That way, there's no mixing them up because we have jalapenos and natapenos and habaneros out here and habanadas out back so that we don't mix them up since they look exactly the same we put them in different garden beds so I guess I'll walk you around and show you what we have if I can figure out how to switch this no I can't can't figure out how to switch it so we're going to have to walk around like this. Um, okay, so I showed you my farm stand. This is my farm stand that my dad and my son built. Um, I have a sign with prices and stuff. Um, that's my herb table back here. Um, then over here we have any of our... Um, this is annuals. Uh, Mexican torch sunflowers. Celosia. Cleome, daisies, mother of millions. These get really cool um, seeds on the edges of the plant. These little right here. And they fall down and then they make more plants. Um, once a year they get a really long stalk and they have really pretty sunset colored flowers. They're like orange and pink and light yellow. All mixed together. But they are like little dangly bell flowers on a plume, kind of like the way hydrangeas are all plumed together. It's very pretty and definitely something I look forward to. Um, earlier on in the spring, we went on vacation and I asked my husband if I could bring the plant with me because it started to bloom and I'd waited all year to see it. We didn't bring the plant, but it's okay because I got back and it was still blooming. Um, this is my perennials for sale. They're um, $10 each or three for 25. We got trumpet flowers, magnolias, crepe myrtles, hydrangeas, um, more crepe myrtles. Then we have this, uh, tubers, um, and established peppers. This is $5 in here. I'm going to actually think I'm going to plant the tomatoes and peppers in here because it's getting too late in there struggling really bad now in these small pots so but we have dahlias lilies uh, blood leaf bananas they haven't made bananas yet and i'm not sure that they do they might just be ornamental um but somebody told me you have to dig up the banana trees and bring them inside for winter if you want to get fruit and then my husband said one time he had bananas at a place he lived and he never did that and got bananas so i'm sure if these actually make bananas but they're very pretty um, cannas, 
and uh, fig cuttings for fig trees. And then the messy greenhouse. My dad and my husband built this for me. It's 12 by 12. Which was okay at first, but then I started my business and now it's pretty small. But I love it. It's beautiful. Um, inside, I have uh, seed cell trays and stuff. Everything gets really dry in here. I have to start. Inside, I have a grow room. Um, which I'm going to have to start using more because... Everything's too dry. I water it in here two or three times a day, and it just can't take the heat. So, in the ground or in the grow room now. Um, hot peppers are over here. Gonna probably have to plant those. They're getting too big for pots. And I have to plant all my veggie starts that I sell for people because they are getting too big for pots. So, that's probably what I'm doing this weekend. I have some seed cell trays right here. Some extra peppers that we really like. And flowers. Since uh, cut flowers have been doing great this year. I got my first order in this morning to make a wedding bouquet. Super excited about that. Um, oh, long tail. This rooster we call long tail or little guy. He's one of my favorites. Um, our roosters are allowed out. They do not have clipped wings. Um... I guess I'll make a whole separate chicken video because this could get very long. Um, let's walk through the garden. I planted rose bushes on each of these trellises. My dad made all these trellises for me. Once again, I'm going to make a video of telling you probably 10 things about me. Um, my parents lived here for a while in an RV while they were in between their changing of homes and lives. But we'll talk more about that. But he built me all these archways out of the cedar posts also more about me i have five kids i have a six week old who i hear crying so now i have to go get him i thought about when is the best time to make this video and there really was no best time to make a video i don't have good time so you can just come around with me and we'll make the video hang on This is Odin. Say hi, Odin. Okay. Okay. This was our first berry patch. The blueberries are ripe now. So we get some, the birds get some. Needs to be weeded pretty bad. Um, but there's one blackberry in there and then uh, nine blueberry bushes. Oh, and grapes at the end. Which have been doing great. I'll show you. Last year was the first year. We've had them two years. Last year was the first year we got anything. It was like two little clumps. But this year. Look at those little clumps. It's doing much better. Those were all over. I bet you the birds are probably eating them. Because they're good at that. Uh, this other one doesn't have any yet. It's really hot and humid here in Georgia. Oh. I had a ooh, snake. I had a... Not looking for that to see what that was. I had a thermometer out here, but I had to bring it inside because it fell in the mud during the last rain. And now the inside's all muddy. I have to figure out how to clean it out. Okay. So, I've tried corn. Uh, I tried it for two years in a row. Didn't work. Tried different things. Um, I stopped for two years, and then I tried it again this year. So, I was really excited about it. Here it is. Planted it in March. So, it's three months old. It's barely as tall as me. It's really dry. We put, even put in drip irrigation for it. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm not going to do corn again. I can't give up a quarter of my garden to something that doesn't work out. We also have volunteers, Solosia and Amaranth in here from last year. Um, I left them because we can eat them both, so we can cut them up and saute them. Um, 
There's also random vines in there. I left one or two. There's a watermelon or two and then um, okra at the end. I have to weed in here really bad. That's going to be my goal this weekend is to get this weeded and figure out what can stay and what has to go. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to just rip out the corn because, well, because this. So, um, over here, sunflowers. I've had this tree I bought when we moved in, um, probably eight years ago. And it's an apple tree, and I found out that when we moved down here that apple trees are not for the south. Uh, when I first started gardening, I knew pretty close to nothing about anything. Um, but then this year... There's about nine on the tree. Um, so, can't wait till we get to eat those in the fall, I guess. Um, back here we had tatso and bok choy on the ground. Gonna have to pull that up and till it in. Um, this raised bed is always lettuce. Um, it's bolted fire bolted um this is my year of oh that's beautiful let's look at this this is um endive that tendrily lettuce looking stuff look at that flower isn't that pretty oh, i love seeing the seed flowers they're so pretty um this is my year of save all the seeds since it was hard to order stuff in the spring and I still can't get everything I want. I have to make multiple orders of when it comes in to order it right away before it gets out of stock again. Um, so this is my year of save the seeds. So everything bolted is going to stay bolted and I'm not going to pull it out for more space yet. And more roses on the trellises. Ah. Uh, kale at the bottom, Jericho kale, I think it's called, blue kale, collard greens over there, Swiss chard, which we've had the problem of, same as everybody else with the, uh, flea beetles or whatever they're called, so this chard right here is all holy and pretty much no good anymore. So it looks like we'll be tilling that in. There's a bed that needs to be weeded, of course. I'm pretty sure it's just got onions in one end and it's empty with a couple volunteer squash plants. Save all the seeds. Another lettuce bed and broccoli rob. I already saved the broccoli, broccoli rob seeds. Now it's time to get those lettuce seeds. Then we have two empty beds, well, three empty beds, um, where the carrots and beets were, which we love. Um, this coming fall, all of these beds will be either beets or carrots, and then the others will go in the ground in a giant row, and we will have a lot more than we did this year. We only did three beds of the beets and carrots, and we're definitely going to be doing more in the fall. Isn't that pretty? Um, then we have the hot peppers. Up, oh, well, we have these totes of horseradish, ginger, and turmeric. Um, I don't know if all this moving around is going to be making people sick. So. Maybe not while you watch my face and move around. I don't know. Um, here's our peppers. Some of them we saved from last winter. Um, and we overwintered them in the greenhouse and in the high tunnel that we made. Um, so they didn't get a frost. And I have pros and cons about each of those. I think I'll make a separate video for that since this is already 15 minutes long. And it's only one garden out front. 
Um, I've left a lot of the volunteer stuff also out here in this front garden because of the lack of seeds I could buy. I wanted to get seeds from at least the volunteer plants. Um, but these are hot peppers. We have a pink tiger. A, I don't know how to say this, Guatemala, some kind of purple long pepper. Um, fish peppers, these are gorgeous. I wish I had two hands so I could here, show you these variegated peppers on these beautiful variegated plants. Um, lemon peppers are actually my favorite. One of my favorite hot peppers, and I don't really like hot peppers, but these are lemon drops, and they're really good. Um, and then we have some random ornamental uh, hot peppers, and these tiny purple hot peppers that I don't know what they are. This was some that we had saved from last year, and the tags had washed off, so if it's new last year, then I don't really know what it is because we lost the labels so this I planted over in this side first and then went down that way and then we have Brazilian star uh, hot peppers these plants are loaded with peppers um, shishito and poblano this bed was all yellow and losing all of its leaves from the hard winter of being in a pot and running out of nutrients. So we put in bone meal and blood meal um, to boost up its nutrients. And almost all of the yellow is gone. There's still a couple plants that have some leaf curl, like this one and this one. And that one has leaf curl bad. Um, and yellow, like this one. But it has a lot of new growth, too. So... I'm optimistic about it. We just took out a couple arches that were down here at the end uh, where all that grass is. So I'm going to till up that spot and plant some. I have some peppers in the greenhouse, um, more jalapenos, and then random peppers. So I'll be planting those. Um, I got to mulch more. I got a long list of stuff to do. Um, here is our Chinese five peppers, five color peppers. They change all different colors. Right now they're purple. I'll have to take a picture when I get some other colors, but these are really pretty. This is the Sugar Rush Peach. They are delicious. One of my favorites. Lemon drop, fish pepper, jigsaw pepper, and... The sugar rush peach sugar rush peach and lemon drop for eating because they have a sweet flavor to them along with the heat so i like that and then the fish pepper and the jigsaw pepper because they're beautiful here's a jigsaw pepper it's the same looking as the uh, chinese five pepper but it's variegated these are pepperoncinis um, we have this recipe that we love for Mississippi pot roast, and it calls for a jar of pepperoncinis, the pickled pepperoncinis. So I'm going to make a bunch of pickled pepperoncinis so that we can use our own in the recipe this year. And I'll have to share that with y'all, make a video on it or something. Um, then banana peppers. Banana peppers. And what's that? And I wish peppers looked different. I mean, some of the leaves, obviously, like the variegated ones or the colored ones or the smaller ones, are easier to tell apart. Jalapenos, right there. That's what these are. But all peppers have the same leaf, same growth kind, same same way. There's a little bit difference. Like here's the jalapenos. And then here's habaneros. These leaves are bigger, rounder, glossier. I guess more crinkled. 
if that's a way to describe a leaf, but that's the only difference. Something got into my bone meal. Don't leave bone meal in your garden. Um, these are all ahi peppers that I don't know. Um, ahi dulce and ahi pineapple. And I thought there was another one, but the signs that my husband made are peeling because I guess the plywood's not holding together, but he got a laser cutter a couple years ago, a small one. And so I always try to find something for him to make me. Sign. He made me those for all my peppers and they're peeling off. And I should have sealed them with something or made them out of better wood or both. Maybe painted them and then had him cut the design on it and then sealed it. Because a lot of them ended up like this. So now I'm going to pause it and I'll bring you to the next garden. Oh, just kidding. That was only half the garden. Over here is eggplants. We do the frog egg eggplants because I love the taste of eggplant, but don't like how they get all slimy. Um, when you cook them and that's why most people fry them kind of like same deal as okra is it's the sliminess Even though I don't think eggplant has mucilagin um, It's still the goopy yucky texture so frog egg eggplants are these tiny I Picked them for a woman yesterday. So because she wanted she comes almost every week every other week and gets them They are these tiny little eggplants that are smaller than a golf ball. And we just cut them in half and saute them real quick. And they're delicious. Um, here is my broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts. There is a long row of them that are bolting. Uh, I planted them in February, started them in the greenhouse in January. Hope for a spring crop, as usual, and got nothing because it's Georgia and there is no spring. It's hot, hotter, and hottest. This is also why I can't wait to move to Tennessee. Because it'll be a lot more temperate and I can plan better at planting things um, here's my squash rose this one is a uh, bunch of different kinds of squash winter squash spaghetti squash uh, candy roaster squash pumpkins which i never get but i still plant every year in hopes um and then we have summer squash which it looks like there's only one plant left because again, I need to weed the whole thing. I need to lay down mulch so I can stop. Um, I don't do anything coming up soon. It gets really hot July and August. That's where I just let everything run out. Also conveniently when everybody wants fresh produce for summer, but we just can't do it. What we have is what we have. And then we start planting again, um, sowing stuff for fall in August and September. And then we go right through, because last year we didn't even get a frost. Um, cucumbers. This year I have Richmond green apple. Uh, lemon cucumbers, which have pickle bugs in them, pickle worms. All those. And then we have the market more regular cucumbers. Which are doing okay not great some of them have worms some of them are okay not a big fan uh the male bar spinach climbing spinach it's doing pretty good it 
It's supposed to be heat tolerant or heat loving, so that'll help. We have a whole row of um, onions. That are starting to look like it's almost time. The leaves are drying up. Maybe a few more weeks. And then zucchini on this side. Now I do like everyone else. And I go through Baker Creek. And I do the heirloom seeds. And I uh, grow all my stuff from seeds. But it seems like those are the most susceptible. They're the hardest to grow. Hardest to maintain. I don't know if it's the heat, the humidity, the all of it, everything, but I think next year we're going to try some hybrids and we're going to do more hybrids and compare because I just can't fight this anymore. I fight tooth and nail for the past two or three years and I have multiple plants that look like they're doing just fine, but I mean the bottom ones need to be cut off. Yeah, I cut them. Every week I cut the bottom off. This one looks like a vine borer got it. Vine borer, vine borer. But the other ones look okay. Decent. Nothing. I get a lot of blossom end rot, which I actually read on squash. is due to a lack of pollination, not lack of calcium like it is with tomatoes. But that it's usually... Um... It could be a lack of calcium. But most of the time it's, uh lack of pollination or bad pollination um and then this is my favorite garden and i don't know if i should just continue with this video or do a separate video for each garden maybe i'll try and go put the sweaty baby down and do a separate video for each garden that way i can get a little more in depth because i know i ran through some things in the big garden but if you guys seen anything that you have any questions about, you can feel free to ask me. Um, also, I'll share any tips and tricks I have. But obviously, I have the same problems as everyone else. Um, gardening is a lot of trial and error and try, try again. And if you don't succeed, keep trying. So if you think it's too late to plant, still try. If you think that the plants are gone and won't go anymore... Rip half of them out and leave half of them in and see what happens. Plants want to grow. They want to produce seed. So if you don't let them, they'll keep growing. That's why you pick harvests to continue producing. Or why you pick flowers so they keep producing. Some of them, like perennials, don't keep pushing flowers forward. But a lot of them do. And a lot of annuals do too. The more you pick, the more it will grow. So don't be afraid to cut. Don't be afraid to leave something and see if it works. It's a lot of trying. A lot of effort. Sweaty Georgia here. And another baby. We'll say bye and end this video. Uh, like and subscribe. Mm, so you can see more of me rambling, stuttering, babbling through my videos. But there is good content there, I promise. And I will get better. Ah, oh, Freya, Millie. Freya's three. Okay. I'll see you in a few minutes in another video.